Good morning, everyone, and welcome to PSGI's webinar, Finding the Right Set of Solutions for Your Enterprise. Um, today, we'll be, uh, we'll, there'll be a couple of us present, presenting today. One is Dave Kravitz. He's an executive with our firm, and he's had a career uh, in manufacturing, and he started with Owens Corning Fiberglass and then went to uh, Baxter Healthcare, followed by manufacturing software consulting for companies such as Cupidio Associates and Unisys and Infor. And, and I'm Larry Duby. I'm PSGI's founder and president, and I have a long history of leadership roles in customer support and software development with companies such as MarkCam and Bond Process Solutions. But before we start the presentation, let's start with a little bit of housekeeping. Um, today's session is being recorded, and uh, the recording will be available for download after this, so anybody who can't attend will be able to get access to it. Um, and everyone is muted so that we don't get any background noise during the during the presentation. However, we do encourage questions uh, uh, during the presentation uh, using the GoToWebinar chat feature. Uh, there's an arrow in the upper right-hand side. <laughs> We're having a little bit of difficulty moving to the next slide, so hold on one second. There we go. Um, uh, there's an arrow in the right, upper right-hand side, upper right-hand corner of your screen that will give you access to the Go, Go to Webinar control panel uh, and the chat window. Um, our presentation today is uh, between 45 and 50 minutes long. Um, we're going to try to keep it close to that 45-minute range, and that will leave us for uh, 10 to 15 minutes at the end uh, for questions. So uh, as you enter the questions, we'll be looking at those uh, throughout the presentation, and if it makes sense to address those right when we're uh, we're talking about the different slides. We'll do that. If it seems to make more sense, we'll hold them on to the end. But we will make sure that we answer all questions before the end of the presentation. Uh, so let's uh, next just turn to the agenda. We're going to do just a quick, brief introduction of PSGI. And then we'll start with uh, talking about trends we see in the ERP marketplace from our vantage point. Uh, and that vantage point comes with working with dozens of manufacturing and distribution companies over the past few decades. And then we'll continue with an overview of primary ERP strategic options that are available for your organization today. And then how to select the optimal strategy for your company uh, and basically the questions that you need to ask yourself. So that's the, the general outline of, of what we'll be talking about. Um, and uh, but first, let's just uh, do a, just a quick introduction of PSGI. So PSGI was founded in 2003. And our three-legged stool of experience includes uh, working for decades with ERP, supply chain, and other enterprise applications. Again, working uh, for decades with the IBM I platform and its predecessors. And finally, uh, more decades serving process manufacturing and distribution companies with the strategic services they depend on uh, every minute of the day. So like I mentioned, we were founded in 2003, so uh, you know, our decades of experience come from uh, the skill sets that we have within our employees, and uh, we've been working in this environment for a very long time. Uh, with all that experience, uh, PSGI has software and services for manufacturing companies with a focus in, in three areas. One is providing application support and development services. Uh, this includes a robust customer support solution, even for highly modified older software implementations. Uh, we, we also perform all software development tasks from business requirements definition through the development stages to eventually go live and implementation. Uh, a significant part of PSGI's business has, has also become uh, IBM My Managed Services and Data Center Services. And lastly, the third leg of our stool uh, is business operations consulting with a focus on operational excellence. So we work with companies to get the most value out of their software applications, sometimes by implementing unused features or modules like lot tracking or finite capacity, sometimes by optimizing business processes while ensuring the software functions are, are in lock, lockstep with those processes, and sometimes by helping them find new solutions to meet new requirements. So the, uh, uh, basically what we do is we support our users from the plug in the wall uh, with our managed services to the uh, to the end user, and uh, and we can do that uh, throughout the organization. Now, one thing I did want to add was that um, you know with our experience, we've been working with companies supporting in, in many cases older sets of software. And as we talk about uh, some of the things we're talking about today, uh, we we have quite a bit of experience with these companies actually looking at newer ERP applications, whether they be on premise or cloud solutions. And, and we're, we're witnessing firsthand uh, as we help them 
continue managing their, their current business as they walk through their, their goals for the future. So we're going to, we basically wanted to tap in some of that experience and some of that knowledge and some of that visibility and, and develop this, this, uh, this webinar for you. Uh, next is uh, just a, a quick sampling of our customers. As you can see on the list, we work with uh, mid-sized to, to, uh, to large companies. Uh, these range from process to discrete manufacturers and distribution companies. Uh, and so that's our background. Um, um, uh, and that's all I really want to say about PSGI today. Let's get on with our with our webinar. And I'd like to uh, to introduce Dave Kravitz. Uh, like I mentioned before, he's a, a member of our firm here with uh, lots of manufacturing experience, and he'll be leading you through the the webinar for uh, for the most part today. Thanks, Larry, and uh, good morning, everybody, and and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I wanted to start by talking about trends that we see in the ERP marketplace, uh, and we've been we've been seeing these trends as you know, as Larry said, for, for decades. Uh, but more recently, I think companies have become more realistic and, and maybe scared is the right word because um, individuals that I speak with just shudder when I, when I talk about things like rip and replace or big bang ERP implementation strategies. And, you know, no one that, I, that we speak to is, is, is really heading down that path of, of rip and replace. They're all you know, uh, looking at other, uh, at other strategies because these traditional ERPs are just they're just too bloated with complex interdependencies you know they, they hamper you know their the IT organization the ability to stay ahead of, of changing business requirements and yet yeah we see I mean we've been talking about agility for years uh, but but the need for agility and responsiveness of an organization uh, it's never been greater you know comp companies you know they're, they're just looking for less risky strategies to move forward um, you know some of them you know some of them unfortunately they, they 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 trust the leading vendors best practices templates or another vendors micro vertical approach and they're trusting that this this may meet their needs uh, you know some companies really aren't diving into the detail that they have to but it's it's not often the case that just following the vendors approach is the way to select software. You know, there's definitely other other approaches. So the companies that we deal with mostly are are looking at longer term, multi step roadmaps. I mean, we have companies we work with today that are looking at five year implementations of strategies, not you know not trying to get something slammed in in 18 months. You know, they're you know they're working towards these less risky strategies. And but interestingly enough. You know, some of the analysts are predicting that by 2020, that's only four years away, less than 20% of multinational organizations are going to go for the big single instance mega suite ERP, which are definitely predominant today. And I guess one of the things that, uh, you know, that keeps people looking for less risky strategies is shown in this chart here. You know, the, it's no wonder that IT executives are, are reconsidering their strategies. E ERP implementations continue continue to cost more, take longer than expected. Cost overruns are occurring at more than 53% of projects. Lateness approaching 75%, and 60% of the projects are achieving less than 50% of the benefits that they had planned for, they anticipated. So I guess overall, we'd have to say that the satisfaction with ERP implementations that we're seeing is mixed at best. And Dave, I'm going to jump in real quick. You know, interestingly enough, anybody who's worked in the uh, uh, you know the software application business for a little while, or specifically around ERP, can't be surprised by these numbers, right? We 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 all know about the implementations uh, that are out there and how long they are and how expensive they are. Uh, this has been going on for a long, long time. Uh, so you know, IT executives know this stuff. Uh, yet it's yet it's still happening. In, in one example, we worked with a mid-sized chemical company. Who uh, who sought out bids for a, a new on-premise solution, uh, one of the tier one applications, and and in those three bids they got, they actually selected the 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 bid that was most expensive and had the longest time frame. They they felt it was the most realistic uh, company to work with. Uh, it, you know, it, so IT executives are going into this with their eyes wide open. Yet these still these things are still very complex. Uh, and in this particular instance, even though they chose that bid, uh, they still came in over budget and they uh, they did not meet their time frames. So I think IT executives are 
aware, uh, uh, we all are aware, and they're trying to do their best to do this. But like I said, there's always something in, in these large implementations that are, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are causing what you see on this chart today. Yeah, it's enough to uh, to expect that these IT executives have deer, you know, have the, uh, the proverbial deer in the headlights, uh, for you know, expression fits right now. Um, another aspect of this is we see that the merger, you know, the merger and acquisition activity uh, is leading to ERP consolidations within firms. Uh, a couple years ago, a uh, meat producing customer of ours was acquired uh, by us, actually by a uh, company that had already had an existing ERP. But they decided to go with the decades-old legacy software throughout the organization. It was functional, and in their words, it, it just worked. So, you know, they have done that very successfully throughout the organization. A few other customers that we have worked with have attained Tier 1 software licenses through acquisitions they've made, and now they're slowly moving to that software. Uh, a CPG food customer and also a steel manufacturing customer that uh, – that I actually just met with recently. They've used newly acquired smaller and less complex sites to trial the software for the whole organization, and those trials continue. You know, we see these examples. These are examples of customers that are looking to reduce the risk, to take, take st small steps as they uh, you know, move down this path. Meanwhile, we continue to see the cloud ERP market growing, and we'll talk about this in, in more detail later, but security, it's no longer the concern that it once was. Also, we see that uh, software without immediate business impact, it's storming to the cloud, so to speak. In fact, one of our industrial customers believes that any software that doesn't have safety impact, such as systems connected to the shop floor, he says they have potential to move to the cloud. And he's eyeing almost all of his enterprise software, you know, to go to the cloud over, you know, again, a long controlled process. We see cloud ERP becoming a non-issue. So just be normal, accepted part of most ERP systems. And today we see 50% of organizations are increasing their cloud spending. We see cloud providers competing more and more with on-premise providers. And we see that most ERP and third-party hosting vendors are providing plenty of affordable options that companies are, just, are wanting to migrate to the cloud. For example, I think it's widely known that Oracle is investing most of their research dollars, and, and recently we've seen an increase in marketing, in marketing dollars toward their cloud platforms. A tape manufacturer, a customer of ours that I, that I met with a month, a month or two ago, they're working with a software vendor that provides both an on-premise and a cloud application. And, but they're going, to start, they're going to start with the on-premise application because they know that that today has greater and much needed functionality. But they fully anticipate that down the road, the majority of their implementation is going to be moving to the cloud just as the functionality in the cloud improves. Another thing that we see is that the best of breed, surprisingly, is making a comeback. Because years ago, best of breed got a, got a really bad name due to, due to the complex and unreliable integrations required. But newer integration technologies, faster systems, and applications built for integration are making this, strategic, this strategy excuse me, viable again. Over the years, we've seen companies implement Tier 1 ERP, and then realized that certain areas of their business were, weren't sufficiently served by what I would call this commodity software. They turned their attention to best of breed applications, trying to gain a competitive advantage in those areas. And just like applications in your app store, there's an increasing number of functionality focused point applications that provide viable alternatives for companies looking for unique solutions, again, that deliver not only added value, but add competitive differentiation. So these best of breed solutions are taking an increasing share of the market from in-house ERP vendors. So buyers of these systems are looking for what Gartner calls systems of differentiation to address extra needs and meet strategic goals over the next two to five year time span. We thought at this point we would take a look at considerations that uh, IT executives you know, as part of, you know, for RT executives, as part of our <clears throat> current trends. 
you know, we want to know, you know, we took a look at what is keeping manufacturing IT executives asleep, you know, awake at night. So the first thing is one of your biggest challenges, increasingly company boards and CEOs want manufacturing CIOs to help grow the business. In fact, PricewaterhouseCoopers says that technology advances are the top most most uh, the highest priority for CEOs these days. In fact, 63% of CEOs believe technology will help the companies with strategic decision making. 84% say operational efficiency gains are in play. And fully 85% say that enhanced customer experience through technology is their target. So that means that there is increased pressure on IT execs to keep on top of newer technologies or to be, or be put aside. Simply keeping the lights on is not enough. IT leaders must, show, must now be in tune with how technology can improve the benefits to, and deliver new products to customers and generate improved top line revenue growth. In short, IT leaders must find ways to deliver value. value. It's generally agreed that CIOs with a seat at the strategy table have a better understanding of their business near and long-term technology needs. But unfortunately, not all CIOs are up to this task in our quick-paced, technology-overloaded digital economy. And they also know that current business needs must still be met without disrupting the business. And this usually takes the majority of IT resources. So what resources are going to be left for the newer technologies? Yet budgets are flat, and they're told to do more with less. And as a result, we see an uptick in outsourcing, such as third-party support. And also, service providers like PSGI are being, a being asked to take on more responsibilities within projects than ever before. But IT execs do want to take advantage of newer technologies to make their companies more agile and grow the business. They do see golden opportunities with newer technologies, such as cloud and, and mobile and social, and also in areas like analytics and master data management, and customer relationship management. Many just don't know where to start. Simplification is also a mantra from IT executives. And companies that implemented ERP years ago and just kept on you know, rolling out that implementation, adding more complexity, they want to simplify what is one of our CPG food customers has called it a rat's nest. They see an opportunity to drive business transformation with NIT to deliver new growth for the business as a whole. Meanwhile, as IT struggles, non-IT organizations are cherry picking complementary tools like talent management and expense reporting and others from best of breed providers satisfying their parochial department specific solutions with the business owner's consent. This ominous shadow IT is just another concern keeping IT execs awake, awake at night. Well, switching gears, let's take a look at some of the key considerations for ERP evaluation. And this list here is not in any specific order, but these are some of the areas that we will be discussing today as we talk about cloud ERP, on-premise ERP, and hybrid ERP. On-premise ERP is the traditional method of deploying SAPs and Oracles and other tier one, two, and three ERPs in your, you know, in your company's data centers. And for the purpose of this webinar, cloud ERP are those applications that are newer than on-premise ERPs, and they've been, been built specifically to run on the cloud and take advantage of this of all this platform offers. You know, it's not it's not the it's not the ERPs that are just you know on premise thrown into a data center you know in the cloud. Hybrid ERP is operating your current on premise ERP and adding desired point functionality, though you know through an ever increasing number of these specialized applications available in the cloud. So moving forward, let's start with a discussion about cloud solutions. And again, the barriers to deploying ERP in the cloud are, are definitely falling as we're seeing. You know, as we're seeing all over. And this has led to a dramatic increase in the market share of these solutions. In fact, the cloud market growth rate is now five times that of the IT industry overall. And Gartner says 47% of all enterprises plan to move a majority 
of their core systems to the cloud within only five years, quite a startling statistic. And SAS-based software implementations will increase from what they were just a few years ago at 22% to 45% 10 years later in 2023. Yet other estimates that even by 2020, that's just four years from today, 80% of the world's largest companies will still have more than half of their IT on premise, on site. Also, security of cloud applications is not as great a concern as it was just a few years ago, and we'll discuss that in more detail shortly. But the cloud ERP marketing messages are very clear. Newer technologies bring agility and responsiveness to the enterprise in stark contrast to the BMF Tier 1 ERPs. And some vendor finance studies have shown that companies implementing these newer technologies appear more responsive, but it is, it's difficult to compare. As cloud ERP functionality increases, you know, will that bog down this agility? It's a question, and, and I think a balance is going to be needed in the future. Let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages of deploying in the cloud. On the advantage side, it's definitely quicker and easier to provide user access. You know, just the web, a user ID, and password. A big selling point for companies that expect significant growth or even downsizing is that, ER, that cloud ERP scales with the business. You know, buying a single solution like a cloud ERP is inherently less technically complex and has tighter integration compared to a multi-solution implementation. Another advantage is that, that the ERP cloud vendor provides the infrastructure, applies all the new release updates, takes care of disaster recovery and more removing these burdens and expenses from the IT organization. And working with a single vendor eliminates the proverbial finger pointing and one throat to choke. But you should be aware that many software vendors of all types, and in fact, this has been going on for years, and many of these vendors depend on outside service organizations to implement their software. And sometimes those outside organizations really don't understand, especially the newer software products. Now, on the other side, the only disadvantage that, that I see to cloud deployment may be the loss of, IT, uh, loss of control of the IT infrastructure, which may be troublesome to some IT execs and may be, you know, may be advantageous to others. The next area I'd like to discuss you know, with cloud ERP is implementation and functionality. And generally speaking, I think you could say the cloud ERP software today is less mature and therefore has less functionality than on-premise applications, which have been have had years, of, if not decades, to grow in depth and breadth of functionality. And what this means overall is that cloud ERP has less functionality to implement, but you know, less, less functionality to implement and less software to learn and fewer options to test and select. But robust on-process software products have very large footprints of functionality and also multiple ways of processing business flows. But all of this, you know, what we've seen is all of this requires longer implementation time. So, you know, of course, an e a single solution is easier to learn and understand versus the multiple applications. On the other side of the coin, assuming you find a cloud ERP solution that supports all of your core business requirements, what about other non-core requirements? Will there be significant impact if some of the business processes are not supported? Are there workarounds? Can these be done outside the core system? Will the vendor commit to putting the functionality into the product? Hmm, another aspect. It's difficult for these vendors to be everything to everyone. Can a single software application meet everyone's needs? If not, people will be more reluctant to change what they do today. And change management, which is the most important component of software implementations, becomes more difficult. You can have the best ERP system, but if people don't use it, you're not going to achieve your goals. Now, I call these applications commodity applications because companies that buy them can implement them identically. Can a single commodity application bring a competitive differentiation to your business? I don't know. Maybe this isn't what you're expecting from your ERP implementation, but it's definitely what cloud ERP vendors are selling. Uh, and Dave, I'm going to jump in here just a little bit to talk about some practical things too. So you just alluded to the fact that uh, you know, at least to some of these cloud applications are, are not as functionally rich as some of the on-premise applications. Those on-premise applications have been around for forever. 
Uh, so you have to really be careful on what you can you can uh, accomplish with some of these applications, uh, although they're easy to deploy. Uh, the, the other thing on a, on a practical standpoint, I just want to mention uh, talent stretch. And uh, I, I'm aware of, of, uh, of a company right now that's, that's uh, fairly new to the cloud ERP uh, world. Uh, they're doing quite well. They're adding customers very quickly. Most of those customers are smaller single site manufacturing sites. Um, but I also know that, uh, you know, one of their lead implementation consultants is managing seven accounts at a time. So, so they, you know, some of these, as you mentioned before, in some of the growth charts that you're looking at, growth, growth numbers that you're mentioning, these companies are growing pretty fast and, the, and they have these customers out there that uh, are demanding some pretty quick implementation. So I guess my comment is, if you're looking at these things, just go in with your eyes wide open in terms of talent. Uh, not only their, their internal talent to, to, to those particular companies, but also their partners. And in many cases, the partners are fairly new to those organizations as well. So they're just one step ahead of the customers, uh, where when you're looking at some other applications, you know, there's decades of experience. So, so in this new world, uh, you, you know, looking at the talent, I think, is something that you really want to make sure that you do from a practical perspective. It's not just the functionality, but, you know, who can help you get there. Yeah. To be forewarned, I guess. Yes. Well, the next topic we like to discuss is customizability. I think it's important to realize that 90% of today's ERP implementations require some form of customization to meet today's business needs. Uh, you know, years ago, software was delivered with source code, enabling, enabling customers to modify it to their heart's content in any way they desired. Today, most ERP applications, and definitely all cloud ERP, ERP applications, are delivered without source code, and the inner workings are not modifiable. You know, these cloud ERB packages, they boast a degree of configurability without customization, per se, just to match your business processes. But if this is insufficient, you can augment the functionality. I didn't say modify, but I said augment this functionality using the platform the application is built on and API integration. But you may need to bring a partner in to perform this work. Because it, you know, it, it needs a new set of skills, and these partners may be scarce and expensive. So it's critical, absolutely critical, to dig deep and understand how much you need to configure and customize, and whether the cloud ERP application is still a good fit for your business. You know, companies often seek a system of differentiation through this customization, but how much effort is necessary to do this with this cloud ERP? You know, I guess the the, you know, the, the word of advice is, you know, ma the marketing makes it look easier than it really is, and uh, word to the wise. Since the cloud, you know, the core cloud ERP software does not change, configurations and what I would call this external customization should be less impacted by software updates. But then, you know, the cloud ERP vendor is the one that updates, so hopefully, you know, they can update without impacting your configuration changes. Overall, though, on the other this, on the disadvantage side, we know that customizations in general do increase the technical complexity of a product, and supporting software with modifications or these all these extensions is also more difficult, and it usually falls on the internal or the outsourced support staff to resolve any issues. Also, modifications take time and, and money, increasing the upfront cost. And if you're a global organization, then you need to ensure that the product you select can meet the localization requirements, even with customization. Languages, currency, regulations, local customs, all of these are critical for a multinational company. And I'm going to jump in one more time again and talk about, you know, talent and, and practical issues. Uh, first of all, you mentioned the system of differentiation. I mean, that's a really important thing, right? That's, that's what you need to do. You need to be able to develop a system that, that makes you unique, that, that gives you a competitive advantage. And, and uh, you know, it's really important to take a look at the customizability, uh, sorry, the configurability of the different applications you might be looking at if you're looking at some of the cloud ERP solutions. And, and you may be able to reach that, that goal of system differentiation through, through that con configuration. But if you can't, then you do need to go into, uh, you know, some development work. Uh, and also, like you mentioned, that's probably likely if you're a fairly complex organization because of the, uh, the, um, 
the maturity of some of these applications. So oh, I just wanted to mention that you need to look at things at two different levels. One, you need to make sure that you, from a talent perspective, you can develop the software that you might need and the languages that you might need to develop in. And then uh, secondly, take a look at the platforms that some of these applications are running over. Um, so uh, there's some good and bad to that. And in the example I gave earlier, that, that particular uh, cloud ERP solution is running on you know, over force.com. So they developed their application over the Salesforce model. Um, uh, you know, on the good side, that, that means they have a stable base that they're working from, which is great. Uh, some some minor modifications are actually quite easy to do within that within that uh, within that platform. But on the on the flip side, uh, if you need to do some more complex things, then you not only need some programming resources, but you also need some force.com resources. So uh, you need to make sure that you have. Uh, the, the ability to get that talent or grow that talent within your organization. So, so be aware of how these applications are put together. Okay, thanks, Larry. Let's switch gears and talk about on-premise solutions. Today, the majority of ERP systems purchased are still for on-premise implementation, despite all the cloud hype. There are many vendors that have long, successful histories with positive reputations. On-premise ERP is alive and well and has a great deal of marketplace momentum to this day. Overall, on-premise ERPs are more mature solutions than their cloud cousins, and many would say that they've grown too big and maybe too unwieldy to address today's fast-paced, challenging business requirements. In, the, in our disruptive era of Uber and, and I think what Larry said was the largest hotel in the world, Airbnb. Airbnb now. <laughs> There is still, you know, another subject, there's still the old no one ever lost their job mentality, which drives customers to avoid risk at all costs. It also drives a selection to the perceived safer on-premise purchase decisions. And I'm sure the names of these on-premise providers on the screen right now, I'm sure that they come as no surprise to you. Moving to deploying on-premise ERP. Depending on the situation, on your situation and your likes and dislikes, you may like having full control of things like infrastructure and software, hardware, the operating system, the coordination of release updates, the disaster recovery plans, or you may consider that a disadvantage relative to cloud ERP. That's, you know, that's your personal preference. But as with cloud ERP, an on-premise single ERP solution is inherently less complex tighter integration relative to the multiple application implementation. On the disadvantage side, unless you're limiting your ERP search to solutions that run on your existing hardware, a new on-premise ERP will require new infrastructure to operate. One situation now faced by some owners of tier one on-premise ERP are new costly platform requirements required to obtain significant newer functionality of future releases. So you have an SAP implementing their new functionality with HANA, yet 85% of SAP users are not committed you know, to this functionality, citing the lack of a business case for it. And not to pick on SAP, because 5%, only 5% of Oracle users plan to use the new Fusion applications, again, citing a lack of clear business case. So this forced march that they're going through you know, that they weren't expecting. It's just a new problem for owners of on-premise ERP. And, and Dave, while you're talking about deployment, I know this is a little bit off subject of what you were just chatting about, um, but, you know, we talked about cloud ERP before, cloud applications and, and being able to bring things to the cloud. But uh, I guess in this deployment section here for on-premise ERP, it's in, just something to note that, uh, you can take a step toward that, and many companies are doing that. We're working with a couple, a couple of companies now where they're they're taking all their infrastructure, their hardware, their platforms, and they're they're getting them all hosted. So they're they're removing that complication from their business. So they don't have any more staff that they need to uh, to take on to uh, support and manage those systems uh, where everything's on the hosted side. And when you started talking about cost, um, you know the, the cost starts to get reduced there as well, just from a from a hardware perspective, where you kind of go to the subscription model on most of these hosted solutions versus, um, you know, buying all the hardware and, and putting all the infrastructure in place. So, again, even though we're talking about on-premise solutions, they do own that that license to the software and it is the on-premise uh, application. Uh, they can take a step toward there, and many are, to taking the complexity of their infrastructure and, and giving that to somebody else. Yeah, I guess that also would be a, a means of being able to dedicate resources to 
to different things and managing the maintaining the infrastructure. Right. Spend money on your business. Right. Yep. Yep. So now let's move to uh, implementation and, and functionality for on-premise ERPs. Especially the Tier 1 and many of the Tier 2 applications were introduced years or, in some cases, decades ago. And they've built tremendously broad and deep functionality over all these years. They possess more software functionality and options to address more user requirements. But as with cloud ERPs, a single solution is easier to learn, understand, versus the multiple applications in a mixed environment. But all of this functionality lengthens and makes the implementation process more involved. In addition to delivering modules for more areas of the business, these products also provide multiple ways of performing business flows. So the team, the team has to understand all of the options so they can select the most appropriate for their business, make sure that they work with, you know, work with the organization, and then they have to test them to ensure they fit. So the more functionality with software also requires additional time you know, to, to perform all these tests and then for the users to learn the software. And as with any single solution, it's difficult to be everything to everyone and a single software application may not meet everyone's needs. Uh, I'm going to jump in here one more time. So as we're talking about implementation of on-premise solutions, as I mentioned before, we, we're witness to companies who are going to these solutions right now. We're watching this happen within, within our customer base. Uh, but even in our past, uh, we worked with a very large food manufacturer, mid-sized chemical company, and, and, and a very large uh, consumer products company. And if I could say their names, they, they, would, they would be all names that you'd recognize uh, pretty easily. And each one of these fell into a trap when they went to, to, to implement their on-premise ERPs. Um, they went to their users, and, and basically all their users said they wanted the same functionality they had before in the previous system. So they spent all this time trying to, 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 uh, to make their users happy. And, and in one case, I got a quote from somebody, we just spent tens of millions of dollars to implement the exact same system we had in the past. Uh, and, and these are very experienced IT organizations, very experienced IT executives, uh, and they fell into these traps. And by the way, this was the main reason why these companies uh, uh, you know, helped to bump up those bars on the chart we showed earlier, where the cost overruns are there and the time overruns were there. Um, uh, I guess my point here is you're, you're looking at some of this new software to, to build efficiencies. Be very careful of dropping into the trap of we need all this functionality had, we had before. Uh, and many of these companies do. Like I said, these are very experienced companies, and they spent way too much time trying to get what they had as opposed to looking to the future. I, I actually remember being on site with that CPG company where they had saved so much business coming off of the mainframe computer onto a back in those days what they called a midframe that they said whatever the users wanted they, you know, the, for functionality, they would modify the software to meet, you know, to be exactly like the old software. And when I showed up, they basically said, that's a house of cards, Maybe because they, had, they just had customized it way too much. Moving on, let's talk about uh, on-premise on customization, please. Functionality robust on-premise ERP also has robust tool sets and mechanisms to customize the software functionality, more so than the newer cloud ERP, due to the longer lifespan of these products, which have been around forever. Being able to tailor the software to the business processes may meet more users' needs and enhance user buy-in, making change management easier. And localization probably already exists because the software has time to serve a wider, ge wider geographic area. It may also allow a company to build robust competitive advantages into a commodity ERP for their business. But these concerns must be considered when enhancing parts of the ERP. You know, vendors, years ago, vendors provided source code with their applications and directly customizing the source code and not using more modern techniques was problematic for upgrades. Implementations cost higher when modifying the software. Support costs are higher for modifications, which then must be handled by internal staff or third-party support providers, such as PSGI. There's an increase in technical complexity. There's an increase in the risk of the project being late and costing more than budgeted. There's even an increased risk of project failure. Moving on, let's, let's discuss, you know, I'd like to change the focus now to comparing security between cloud and on-premise ERP solutions. The perception of security risk for cloud ERP solutions has changed dramatically over the last couple of years. 
lowering that barrier for buying. The emergence of major cloud platform providers is changing the landscape and dispelling myths. One such myth, in a public cloud, others can see my data, is simply not true. And just last week, we fielded a question from a customer asking, who owns his data if he puts it all in the cloud? Misconceptions like this and myths are common. You always own your data in this case. But what is true is that cloud platform providers have the wherewithal to implement better security solutions than individual companies. Since they're providing a secure platform for many customers, they can implement powerful tools spreading the cost over a large customer base. Likewise, they can hire and train a team of, specialties, of security specialists. But these, these tools and specialists would just not be justifiable for most, especially the smaller individual companies. Another major security factor is that newer cloud applications were de designed in today's internet age. So solution architects recognize the need to place a major focus on security. And for that reason, <clears throat> security flaws should not be as common in cloud ERP applications. Versus the on-premise security. And then first of all, in the case of on-premise security, it's entirely controlled by your IT staff or your managed services provider. And depending on your point of view, that could be considered advantageous or not. Many on-premise solutions were originally architected before the internet and today's security focus. There may be security flaws making these applications vulnerable. In fact, Onapsis research studied the problem and they believe that 95% of SAP systems have vulnerabilities that can lead to compromised data and disruption of business processes. And the uh, you know, one massive security breach that almost everybody is aware of was happened last year at the US, US Office of Personnel Management although I do believe SAP is contesting whether the breach was in their software. Not to be left out, vulnerabilities were also revealed in PeopleSoft during the Hack in the Box conference in Amsterdam last year. So all in all, it just goes without saying that organizations need to implement best practice in the area of security in all cases. <clears throat> Let's now consider the cost of cloud ERP versus on-premise ERP. <coughs> Excuse me. The upfront investment for on-premise ERP is much higher than cloud ERP, and this higher cost is typically part of the capital budget plan, CapEx, to pay for major new infrastructure, you know, and, all, and also software licenses and development expenses, and typically higher implementation costs. And of course, don't forget the annual maintenance fee of 18 to 25% of the license fee. Also, if that's not enough, there may be additional staff requirements to manage these new systems. The cloud ERP systems, those costs are structured very differently. <clears throat> Since cloud ERP is paid for with periodic, and that's usually that three-month subscription fee, it's treated as a periodic operating expense, OPEX. But the upfront costs are not as large as premise ERP, on premise ERP because such items as the infrastructure and license fees and backup systems and support fees are all included in the subscription. Yet over the life of the system, be forewarned that cloud ERP can actually be more expensive than on-premise ERP. It's like leasing a car every three years versus buying one, buying the car and keeping it for 10. I'd like to now discuss our final third option, and that is the hybrid ERP solution. To us, the hybrid ERP is a best, best of both worlds approach. The requirements for core ERP have remained relatively unchanged for years. In fact, we might argue they haven't changed for decades. But requirements in other areas around ERP have changed increasingly over the years. With a balance of on-premise and cloud solutions, we want to capture the advantages of both methodologies without replacing your entire ERP system. A core suite of applications will remain supplemented by smaller best of read applications. And these, these supplemental applications, they might be the catalyst for a change your organization is looking for. Some people, some analysts even believe that the next generation ERP will evolve by deconstructing these, these monolithic ERP platforms into loosely coupled applications working in concert, some, in, some on premises and some in the cloud. Also, the fact that the core functionality available in many current on-premise ERP systems is comprehensive and, and after years of service, 
They're rock solid. They just don't have many issues and they do not fail. So if your current ERP satisfies your current functional requirements, then these three questions must be asked to see if you're a candidate for this hybrid ERP model. Is the hardware you're currently running on, is it using, is it fully supported and does it meet modern technical requirements? Is the underlying operating system and the database your ERP runs on fully supported? And is your ERP fully supported by the vendor or third-party resources? If the answer to all three questions is yes, then you can consider hybrid ERP. You can surround this on-premise ERP with complementary best-of-breed solutions that satisfy these newer business requirements your organization is demanding. These newer cloud-based point solutions are architected knowing they're going to be connected to enterprise systems. And newer integration technologies facilitate secure communications and also minimize risk. And I'm going to kind of jump in here for a quick comment again. I mean, you brought up some stats earlier where, you know, and maybe there's one that, that, that you didn't bring up, but it was 50% of on-premise, 50% uh, of sales is going to be on-premise, 50% of sales is going to be uh, cloud solutions by the year 2020. Yet one of the things that you did say as well was that 80% of large organizations, 80% uh, of their, the, those organizations will still have on-premise solutions by 2020. So there's a mix, right? So the, the, the sales process is moving up with uh, some of the cloud solutions. At, at the same time, some of these larger organizations are holding on to those on-premise solutions. So even some of the statistics are showing that people are moving towards a, a hybrid environment. And based on our experience, even if somebody's selecting an on-premise solution and they're saying that that's their, uh, uh, their, 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 that's their mantra in-house, they're really truly hybrid solutions. I mean, I don't know of any company that we're working with, and, and those are companies from mid-size to large, so not, not necessarily on the smaller side, um, that, that doesn't have to actually adopt this, this model. Uh, it, there's just too many solutions and too many fast-paced fast development going on on the cloud side not to take advantage of that if you actually want to be an agile business. So, uh, you know, implementing new software, new big ERP is really difficult. At the same time, you want to take advantage of these things. And what I'm finding is everyone is, is hybrid, whether they, uh, they admit it or not. So I say embrace it. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Uh, let's take a look uh, at deployment in the hybrid model. And in terms of deployment, hybrid ERP has the advantage of minimal new infrastructure, and that's a tremendous time and dollar savings. Obviously, it's far easier to deploy point solutions than an entire robust ERP system. And deploying these point solutions is far less risky than deploying an entire ERP, as we've seen by the statistics we presented earlier. Yet the biggest obstacle to a best-of-breed environment has always been the complexity of integration. Newer technologies, the APIs, and the fact that these solutions have been built to be integrated, well, they, that alleviates much of this complexity. But there still remains the possibility of data issues, and since these systems are meant to be integrated, tools are available to quickly fix any data issues and resolve them. Uh, just, a, just another quick comment here. You know, again, based on our, our background, we work with companies who are running older systems uh, in many cases, and, and uh, we had a recent project that we worked on where uh, one of our clients was looking for uh, basically mobile ATP. So, so they needed to have this data presented to their sales force on mobile devices or through a browser. Um, and, and within a couple days, we were able to develop some web services that pulled data off their, their um, that, that actually called applications within their ERP to develop and build that e ATP data and then present it to those to those clients, uh, and, and this was a software application that was written in the early to mid 80s. So this is really older technology. At the same time, you know, we can adopt some of the newer um, hybrid applications and, and tie those all together. So my point is, we get a lot of questions about, hey, this system is pretty old. Can we really do this? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. You, you know, the, the, the technology and platforms that these run on today really help you enable that. Great, great. Moving on. Let's talk about implementation and functionality in the hybrid arena. The two biggest advantages to a hybrid ERP solution, that you already have the solution for handling your core functional requirements, and now you're adding the functionality your organization wants to be competitive. Meanwhile, compared to commodity single vendor solutions, you're minimizing those functional trade-offs that you have to make when you buy any, a single solution ERP <clears throat> of any flavor. And the result is when users get the solutions that they desire from these point solutions, 
system acceptance increases, change management becomes less of an issue. So I guess our guidance is for, you know, our, with guidance from IT, we would say the sales team can pick their own CRM, operations can pick their own WMS, and HR can pick their talent acquisition software. You know, one obstacle is that many of these the best of breed applications depend on specific information being available from the ERP in order to obtain the, the most value. So as an example, you know, warehouse management application may need lot numbered pick list, but, but this lot control feature was never implemented in the ERP. So in addition to implementing the new WMS, they might have to go back and implement lot management in the ERP to have that information to pass to the WMS. So there are multiple stages to this implementation process in some cases. Excuse me. Moving on to the area of security with the hybrid ERP. You know, it has both the strengths of the cloud ERP and unfortunately the weaknesses of the on-premise ERP. So first of all, on-premise ERP is, is, is managed, the security is managed by the customer while the cloud application would be managed by the cloud provider. Now mature applications may have those pre-internet flaws we talked about and possible vulnerabilities while the, app, while the point applications built during the internet age, they'd be architected with a focus on security, with, with security in mind. What I want to show you now is, just, is a collection of areas, and I know there's many more, that um, you know, where we know cloud solutions exist today. And, and there are new applications moving to the cloud all the time, or being, I should say, not moving to the cloud, but being written for the cloud. And new types of competitive advantages being invented there all the time by companies that are focused on delivering competitive advantages. So what I want to do now is present a couple examples. Uh, in fact, I got three examples of cloud solutions that could be part of a hybrid ERP implementation. And these examples uh, will show increasing interaction with the existing on-premise ERP that I believe show the value that they deliver to an organization. And yes deliver that competitive differentiation. The first is Quadrant Software's Quadradoc V solution. And this basically eliminates the need for on-site fax hardware and instead operates using fax over IP or fax over the internet. It's a means of reducing costs while maintaining control, compliance, and availability. Larry, you wanted to add to this? Yeah, so I just wanted to elaborate a little bit that, you know, these examples that you're going through right now, um, what we're really trying to get across is levels of integration and what's possible. So when you mentioned this before in one of your slides as well, that, you know, you have the core ERP functionality and you want to build on that. Depending on how complex your organization is, some of these applications can help you in, in, in a number of different ways and can help you get there quickly. This is certainly one of the easiest integration kind of applications that are out there. In this particular case, you're taking some documents that are on the ERP and you're just getting them off to the uh, uh, to this particular application. So from a level of complexity, really simple, uh, not a whole lot of interaction with the ERP background, and, and there are a number of these kinds of applications that are out there. And so you can get these implemented pretty quick and, and get a little bit of extra functionality for your users. Okay, thanks. The next example of increasing interaction with the ERP is Oak Barrel Software's Spec Exchange. And this application securely connects all of the organizations that you deal with with regard to managing specifications, whether they're vendor or customer specifications, partner specifications. This solution automates the current imperfect manual approval systems and collaboration systems. This electronically collaboratively collects, validates, approves, and publishes specifications for all the trading partners. Larry? So uh, again, just to talk about the integration. So the, the one we just talked about before was you know, really straightforward. This one's just a little bit more complex, uh, where now you need to tie into things like quality data, bills of material, product information. Uh, but again, all this is possible. You, you know, the, these things are really just getting to the database and, and pulling that data out and, and, and providing you know, specification information for, uh, for your users and, and more importantly for your customers. So it's a way to get you know, uh, some specific, uh, you know, uh, uh, some specific functionality that's not within your ERP, but at the same time with a fairly easy integration back to the back end. Uh, and it's a little bit more complex than the one before, 
But again, this is just another way to combine, you know, cloud applications with with uh, your backend ERP tier tier one applications. Okay. Finally, I'd like to describe a comprehensive cloud-based robust solution from VECO International called VCRP, or Value Chain Requirements Planning. Their cloud solution works for organizations with multiple suppliers, manufacturing partners, logistics partners, customers, channel partners, et cetera. And it provides end-to-end -end visibility, plus analytics, plus synchronized planning, management, and execution. And for large organizations with all of these moving parts and all these different systems, BCRP enables organizations to manage their complex supply chain or value chain fairly quickly with this cloud solution. Okay, I'm gonna jump in here one more time again. So this, this helps build our, our, our case really for the hybrid solutions. So again, in our previous examples, we were talking about bringing functionality to your organization pretty quickly with, with some uh, fairly minor integrations back and forth. In this case, um, if you're looking at the slide that's on the screen right now, you, you see some different manufacturing sites and different packaging sites and even different suppliers, you know, vendors and customers that are part of the mix. Uh, so picture a large organization that has uh, multiple businesses within it and, and potentially within those businesses, they're running individual different ERP packages, uh, yet there's uh, some demand that um, uh, you need to get a hold of, you know, get some control around your supply chain. Um, this is a way to move at the speed of business, right? So if you picture that kind of environment where you have a large manufacturer who in days gone by would have to actually implement their, you know, single ERP solutions across the board to make sure that they could do this in some sort of efficient way, that takes a lot of time and a lot of money uh, and a lot of resources. And in this case, you can bring some uh, some really good functionality to the table with uh, integrations to the back end. So the, the main point of this slide is really to talk about that integration and to be able to move at the speed of business. So even if you're in an environment where you have multiple ERP packages or those tier one on-premise solutions, you can use the cloud to your advantage and, and tie those things back in. So that's the main point of our, of our hybrid solution really is to, to look at ways to move quickly, be agile and and make sure that you can do that at uh, uh, you know lower cost than you could in the past and get the same business functionality. At the same time, I want to just make a quick point of the rat's nest comment you made before. It's really important to do this with a plan. So you don't ever want to get yourself in a position where you're just kind of bolting on all these different applications just because you can. Uh, it's really important to understand what functionality you do have within your ERP systems. Take advantage of that and make sure you take full advantage of that. Uh, before you go and augment it when you don't need to. Uh, at the same time, you want to make sure that you can react to, to the market, and, and these are ways to do that quickly. Thanks, Larry. Lastly, I'd like to compare the advantages of a single solution and a hybrid ERP. Hybrid ERP provides best-of-breed functionality, which addresses the defined needs of the organization, leading to agility, responsiveness, and competitive differentiation. It is, of, of the options we've discussed today, the lowest cost option. It's sim simpler change management because you're satisfying specific user needs and there'll be less user pushback. But a single solution like cloud or on-premise ERP, you get an environment that is less technically complex and has tighter integration and maybe, just maybe, more consistent across the application. So in wrapping it up, what ERP strategy is right for you? And I guess what we are looking at is small to mid-sized companies that have simple business processes and they want to implement quickly, cloud ERP is probably the way, is probably the first place you should look. As we get into mid or large companies with more complex business processes, you know, maybe they have some multinational aspects, you know, their business culture is, is of working with larger single vendors. Well, we believe that maybe on-premise ERP is the place for, for, for them to look. And then when we look at small to mid-sized organizations that are likely already have a hybrid environment or, or those that have, an, you know, that have a, an existing success with, you know, with their on-premise ERP and want low overall risk and cost to adding functionality, then the hybrid ERP to, is the way to go. And what we're what we you know what we see in the marketplace is the majority of companies that we work with today are perfect fits for hybrid ERP. 
Yeah, and, and I'll just say that they are hybrid ERP rather than a perfect fit for ERP because they're there. Many of them may not admit it. Uh, they, they, you know, they consider themselves a, a tier one or on-premise solution, but in real life, um, they are really a mix of those applications. And, and I think it's almost a necessity. And like, as I said before, uh, you, you know, embrace it. I think that if you're a mid-sized to large-sized organization, then uh, that's the way you're going to have to move to move quickly. Well, I know we're sort of running over time, but I still want to leave a couple minutes here for questions and answers. Yeah, and and uh, we did get a couple questions in, uh, so uh, we'll we'll read those off and um, and then we'll we'll wrap it up from them. So there's just a couple. Uh, one of them was was uh, just talking about you know are there really uh, alternatives to the the behemoth ERPs that are out there? Um, so I have two comments on that. One is. Uh, I think just what we talked about a minute ago is probably a pretty good example of that, where you really got to look for those those solutions that might help your business um, uh, move at the speed of business, for lack of a better term, uh, and and, uh, and so some combination, just like we said, of the, of the hybrid solutions. So that does mean that you have to kind of rely on those big systems that you have right now. I wouldn't necessarily move away from those uh, if you don't really have to, uh, if they're working well. Um, if you if you are looking to just kind of get things offsite, then you really need to start looking at some of the potentially the cloud solutions for some of the bigger players. If you're a large organization, things like Oracle and SAP are starting to move there and have their cloud solutions. So they may be a little bit more functionally rich than than um, uh, than others uh, as on the, some of the smaller player side. Uh, this is not the right form to do that, but we do have you know charts of the different functionality. Available, you know, some of the major players on the cloud side versus some of the on-premise side, and uh, uh, there, there still is is a shortfall in comparison from the on-premise side to the to the cloud side. So, if you're a large company, it really is trying to look at how do we tie these things together. I think is the the best way to go to to keep yourself moving forward without having to re-implement some really large large package. Um, the the uh, the other question came in was uh, just talked about reducing costs, um, you know, with the overall IT strategy. And, and we have, again, I got I got two points on that one as well. One is um, I think Dave mentioned it a little bit. You know, one of the one of the things that that cloud does do for you is, is it really does lower your your ongoing you know monthly costs. Your, your, your capital expenditures are, are quite a bit less, so that does help quite a bit. And we're working with another company. I mentioned some of the hosted things. Uh, of offloading all of their their infrastructure and and they have a uh, five or six year plan for their current applications and that uh, actually reduces their costs uh, significantly over that time frame uh, by by doing that now they're timing that when they have leases that are up and uh, you know they're going to have to do something anyway um, and then uh, on top of that uh, this one I must admit is a little self serving but you know look at third party support. Uh, for a lot of these applications. So if you're using some of these older applications or even even some of the newer ones, there's a lot of opportunity for uh, for different resources out there. The market is competitive with talent. Uh, so if you can find the talent uh, you know, outside of the main vendors, you can actually save, you know, in some cases, up to 50% uh, of those costs. And those can be significant. And then you roll those off into, into other areas. Um, so those are the, the two main questions that we got. If anybody else has any other ones, by all means, you can you can reach out to us. Uh, you can see some of our contact information on the screen that you see right now. We'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Uh, we did hope, we, we sincerely hope that you found uh, this webinar in, in, uh, informational and you got some good information out of it. Uh, we look forward to talking to you again at uh, future webinars. Uh, Dave, you have any final comments? Yes, I, I want to thank you all for participating with us today. I do appreciate that. Uh, some of you may know that this is actually our first webinar that we have uh, that we have presented today, and uh, we would appreciate any feedback that you want to uh, provide. Uh, you know, let us know if it was valuable or maybe how we could improve. That would be that would be great. And again, the contact information is on the screen. So thanks again for uh, participating with us today. And look for uh, email updates and uh, 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 about where to get the recorded version of this webinar, and you can uh, share that as well. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.